All righty, seeing plenty of people here. Welcome all. Again, this is Paperless Pirates Power Lunch demo series. And this is episode 11, which is gonna be about how to use Paperless Parts multi-component nesting tools right from your quote. I'm your host, Hank Portney. I am a product manager at Paperless Parts. I've been with the company for about two years and was recently transitioned over from our design team. So if you're a current user of Paperless Parts, uh, I'm responsible for some of the user interfaces that you've worked with our platform. And uh, we're joined on this call today by uh, not just our current users, but also some potential users as well. So if you've not used Paperless Parts before, welcome to our series here. Hope you'll enjoy our demo for the day. Again, today we're gonna to be talking about Paperless Parts 2 multi-component nesting modules. The first of which is our sheet metal nesting module, which allows you to quickly generate sheet metal nests from parts across your quote that allow you to maximize your material efficiency and minimize cost. And the same is true of our linear nesting module, which allows you to nest tube, angle, and U-channel metal parts across your quote to maximize your efficiency and accuracy in quoting. And these modules are really expressly intended at quoting um, in uh, our tool. So this is not uh, for nesting for manufacturing. This is really nesting for estimation purposes, making sure that you can get the minimal material cost necessary to fulfill a job so that you can safely apply your margins on top of that and quote accurately and competitively at the same time. In order to show you how these tools work and make this a little engaging both for our current customers and uh, our potential users today, we're gonna look at this little scenario here. I, in this scenario, will be Hank, the estimator at Blood Orange Machine, a fabrication shop that does sheet metal and structural assembly work and occasionally some tube laser work. And I, Hank, just got this email from Henry Engineer, an engineer at this engineering firm that's one of our regular customers, who asked me if he could quote this package, uh, if we could get this package quoted in the next hour or two. They've attached some files and added some specifications about that that we'll go over shortly. But most importantly, they've tacked on at the end of this email that they expect to hear back from us real shortly, and they don't want to be overcharged on material. Now this email, not a lot of pleases and thank yous here, kind of a pissy email if you ask me, um, but we're gonna get this job done because our shop has a reputation to uphold that we're gonna get this work out. Let's see how nesting can make us be able to quote this material uh, or this quote accurately and efficiently with paperless parts. This customer attached uh, a zip file to the email that contains the parts that we're working with. Here we can see on the right of my screen, the zip file attached, PDECO RFQ100. And then when we open that folder, um, we can see all of the parts they've provided. We can see they indicated there are two sets of parts, sheet metal parts and linear metal parts, where linear is a word that they're using and we're using to refer to tube, angle, and U-channel parts, parts cut out of longer pieces of metal. Thanks, so, and, sorry to cut in here. I think oh, um, we aren't able to see the screen that you're referring to. Um, I'm ooh. seeing the agenda screen still. Ooh, sorry about that. No worries, uh, we want you to. Thank you. Keep going there without the visuals. <laughs> you got it. Uh, one second. Can you see that now? Yes. Great. I can Sorry see the, e that, the email with the files. Perfect. Okay, back to the email. So you can see they've asked for the quote in the next hour or two. They've given us some specifications for those parts, and they've asked us not to overcharge on material here. Going back to the folder as well, we can see that we've got uh, this folder full of parts here. And um, inside that folder, we've got two sets of parts, the sheet metal parts and linear metal parts. Inside the sheet parts, we can see a whole bunch of different files. We've got step files and prints as well. We've got some DXF files. In our linear parts folder, we've got a couple of step files as well. When you get a package like this, as you may know from quoting before paperless parts, or if you've used paperless parts, it can be real confusing uh, to know what's in this kind of thing just off of your computer alone. You know, My computer can't open these CAD files right here. So just like a paperless parts user, I'm going to go ahead and drop these into paperless parts and see what we're working with. Give me a second to move my screen around so you can see that. Great. So here we are with a new quote in paperless parts on the left of our screen and the set of files on the right side of our screen. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and drag this entire package of parts in paperless parts at once. Paperless Parts supports all kinds of different file types, like these prints, step files, um, and DXF files. For our DXF files, we have to specify the thickness of them as we put them in, a thickness that was specified in our email as 0.06 inches. We're going to apply that to both files. And we're going to ignore this step for now. 
Here you can see with little to no work, we've dropped all these files into the platform and they're loading up in our screen here. And while this is happening, we're gonna go ahead and drop those same linear parts into the same code here, skipping the step again. Once the parts have loaded, you can see that we are working with models and that those models um, had the prints attached to them uh, that were found in this file folder here. Paypal's parts will intelligently read your files and figure out which ones belong together. So when we see disk.pdf and disk.sep, will helpfully automatically organize that for you. Again, if you're a current Paypalist Parts user, I know you know this stuff, just trying to make this a general presentation before we get to our nesting. You can see after some time, all the files have processed and they're all visible here. And from here, uh, we can open Paypalist Parts' uh, file viewer or part viewer here. This allows us to do a full CAD viewer for all of the parts and a full rich PDF viewer for all of our print files. This allows us to quickly get a look at all the files in this package, all from one place. So if again, if you're coding outside of paperless parts right now, you don't have to open your Adobe program or your SolidWorks all together and manage all these windows at once. All your files and parts can be collected in one place here. Going back to our quote here, the next thing that we would do in our quoting process, and again, if you're a paperless user, you would know this, is you would quickly apply a process to each part. I'm only gonna do that on one here to show you, for example, and then I'll jump to a quote where I've done this all. Processes in paperless parts are templated automation that allows you to quickly get estimated pricing for parts based on what you're going to make them with. In this particular case, this disc part is gonna be a sheet metal part that has some special uh, board holes on the outside there. So we're going to apply our laser process to this, which will generate corresponding routing steps that match this as well. And from our email earlier, I can recall that this uh, material for this part is aluminum 2024. And that is also confirmed in the print attached. With two quick choices up front and one punch in there into the field, we can see that we've automatically added our material and added all of our different routing steps. For uh, sheet metal parts, this also adds an extra layer to your viewing parts in the viewer. You saw those 12 warnings there for a second. You can see that we call out intelligent warnings about the part that will inform how you might manufacture this. Again, if you're a paperless user, you may be familiar with these. These warnings can really help you or especially junior estimators figure out if there are any issues that would prevent you from manufacturing this on your shop's machinery. Here we can see these close countersinks or bores near the edges of the parts, which may be a risk on our machinery. Doing that same kind of work across the quote will bring us to this version of our quote here. Uh, you can see that I have already filled out all of these processes for all the parts. So if I go to this part as well, I have filled out the laser process for the parts. One thing you'll note here as well is that we're working with a bent 3D part. And this bent 3D part has been unfolded by our system. Here is the flat version of that part. Paperless parts will take your 3D models that are sheet metal parts and unfold them for you so they can be used in nesting. This makes it really fast to take the files that you're working with and jump right into nesting and estimating them in our platform, just like a proper sheet metal part. And then we've done this across all of the 3D unfolded parts here as well and see that their patterns are also called out in the quote, including key dimensions like their thickness, surface area, and bounding dimensions. You'll also see we're starting to get a teaser about multi-component nesting here, which we'll get to in a second. But just a brief summary of what we did so far. We took a complex file package from our uh, uh, engineer that sent it to us. We downloaded that, we threw that in paperless parts. Paperless parts automatically read those files and by assigning processes was able to give you intelligent warnings about those parts, specifically related to their work with sheet metal. And we can see that there are similar things happening as well with our linear parts, where within these, you can get all kinds of intelligent warnings and feature callouts for the parts here as well. You can see we're looking at an angle part. But that's all just a prelude. You're here for multi-component nesting. Let's get started on that. Paperless Parts multi-component nesting tool is designed to give you a, uh, is done to get you accurate and efficient material costs for your quote. In some sheet metal circumstances for competitive quoting, you may want to make sure that you are charging your customer for as least material as you actually need to make those parts. So our tool is gonna allow you to calculate that. Our tool allows you to amortize material cost and setup time across all parts that are included in the same kind of nest. And you can access nesting at any time on a part by browsing to its sheet metal interrogation and opening the nesting module, or by going in from the top level of a quote with the multi-component nesting tool. 
Either way you open this, from this space, you'll see all components in the quote that are eligible for multi-component nesting. When you quote as normal in our platform, you'll be setting up components for eligibility. So they'll all be populated in this list. This space can act as your place to choose which components should get nested together. What you choose may be impacted, of course, by physical requirements. The fact that the materials must be the exact same material to cut them out of the same sheet based on certainly their part thickness. Of course, you cannot cut things out of the same sheet if they are not the same thickness of part uh, when they're at least in their flat pattern. Um, it may also be impacted by what you know the customer is going to buy together. From our email earlier, we're pretty confident that our customer is going to buy everything in this package. So we can safely nest whatever we like and assume that they're going to buy us and not undercut uh, us if, we, uh, if they bought one part and not all of them. To get started with the tool, all you have to do is select the first component you'd like to engage with. And from then, things will start to immediately change. First, you'll notice at the bottom of your screen, you'll get this panel that calls out what you've selected so far. So far, we selected one aluminum 5052 H32 component from one quote item. The quote item is shown here in the table. In this particular quote, well, we've been asked to quote out 500 of these various parts together. So we certainly want to use a nest to try to get optimal material utilization. Once I've selected my first part, a couple of other things will change as well. We can see that these three parts, which notably have a different material thickness, despite sharing the same atomic material as this part, can no longer be selected because they are not compatible. Because they don't share the same thickness, you wouldn't logically cut them out of the same sheet, so we prevent you from selecting them. And what you can do is you can continue down the list selecting those that are available if you wanna nest them together. But if you're dealing with a large assembly or a large set of files in a quote that are compatible with each other, it could be real tedious to select all those parts in a row. And that's why we have this handy select all compatible button, which will automatically grab all the parts from the quote that can be nested together with your initial selection allowing you to quickly jump into nest configuration and get those nests moving. Once I've selected some components that I'm happy with, I can go ahead and hit prepare sheet nest here. Um, once I do so, I will fill out information that dictates how the nest will work, and that information will be fed back into the costing of components. For this particular example, I'm gonna use a real large sheet size, just for reference and to show you how well our algorithm can fit parts onto a sheet. So I'm gonna use a very unrealistic 200 by 200 inch sheet size. I'm gonna give it a grain direction of lengthwise, although it certainly wouldn't matter in this case because the sheet uh, is uh, both ways, but by choosing a grain direction here, I can also specify the required grain direction of each part on the sheet, which can help enforce uh, the orientation requirements necessary for its manufacture. Again, although we're nesting an estimation, we wanna nest uh, exactly the way that we could make this part, so that when we get to manufacturing, if we don't have other jobs to bundle this with, we know that we have created an accurate nest that can be used for manufacture. So when, again, we go to make it, we're making sure we're not getting burned on material. So again, up front, we've chosen a length and width of the sheet and chosen a grain direction for the sheet. And you'll notice as well that material and thickness are automatically brought in from the part geometry, giving you one less thing to worry about in the selection experience. Finally, we can punch in a cost per sheet. Um, in this particular case, I'm just punching in arbitrary costs. I was consulting McMaster earlier and even they don't sell it 200 by 200. So we're just gonna go ahead and ballpark that at $500 and assume some local mill is crazy enough to give us this kind of sheet. And we can average uh, costs by per sheet or per pound. And something I'm leaving out of here for any folks that have an ERP system and would be considering integrating that ERP system with paperless parts or have that integration integrated with paperless parts, that ERP system, you can actually source your costs from your historical costs from your ERP system and not necessarily have to enter it manually. But just for this example, I'm showing you a manual entry. After entering all your key stock properties, you can proceed into nest settings. And this is where you configure uh, the layout of the nest using certain properties and dimensions. First and foremost, you'll see two behavior options here. Common line cutting allows you to put parts as close as possible together, but still respect your laser curve width. So checking that will disable the part-to-part -part clearance, which is if you don't have common line, how far should the parts be apart outside of your curve width? We also offer part in part, which allows you to place um, uh, or allows our nest to automatically generate with parts inside of other parts. Let's say one part has a large cutout space like a donut, we could fit another circular part inside that to use even more of the material. And these are all your choices in your configuration, depending on what works for your parts. 
You can set an edge buffer as well, which will be sort of the margins around the edge of the sheet, as you may well know from your nesting work. And you can control curve width as well to respect your laser. So all of these settings allow you to control exactly how the output nest performs. So you can have full control of its actual uh, appearance, although we will generate it for you with these parameters. Finally, you have to choose key information about how your pricing is gonna be applied to components. In this case, uh, in, in paperless parts in general, we price individual parts and then sum that up to total prices when parts are part of some kind of assembly. When you're creating a nest like this, you're talking about one material cost that spans all of these different components. And so we need to figure out where that material cost should live in your quote. And the way we do that is we allow you to choose the amortization strategy of those parts. We have two key methods in sheet metal, area of parts and number of parts. Area of parts uses the relative area of each part on the sheet. You can see that uh, with area of parts, this part has 25% of the area distribution, and this part, which is larger, has 51% of the potential area distribution. By costing it this way, you're allowing us to apply more of the total cost of material percentage-wise to this part. That can be real helpful if your customer is gonna be reading each line item on your final quote and trying to suss out if you're giving them a good deal. By amortizing correctly, you can make sure that you're showing them numbers that feel realistic for the actual material cost of that part. Occasionally, you may also be interested in using number of parts if the customer is not gonna be looking that in depth or if you're in some kind of assembly and you wanna divide things evenly here. Finally, you also have control of something we call drop. Y'all may know drop as unused rectangular area at the end of a sheet that you would intend to reuse after nesting. We allow you to choose the drop threshold in our platform to decide when you think you're gonna reuse something so you don't cost it out to your customers. With a drop threshold of 20%, what I'm saying is that if any unused rectangular area on one side of the sheet exceeds 20% of the total area of the sheet, I'm not gonna charge my customer for it. This tool is real helpful at making sure, again, you can decide how much of a deal you're giving your customers with our nesting tool. If I chose a drop threshold of 100%, I would not be asking, thousand percent there. Chose a drop threshold of 100%, I'd be suggesting that the customer would be charged for all of the material. So again, this really matches your preference, the way you work with your customers, the kind of deal you want to give them, or if you're just interested in charging them outright for the whole sheet that you had to buy anyway. Lastly, as we chose earlier, the grain direction of the sheet, you can also choose uh, the uh, grain direction requirement of each component. So we can insist the component has to follow a certain orientation. If we do that for this component by saying it has uh, lengthwise, then we will make sure that this part is always placed relative to this thumbnail in the same orientation. So if structurally it was required to be bent in a certain way, this could make sure that that was going to respect those bends and those bends would not break. Once I'm satisfied with all my choices here, I can read and consider the warnings. And this is usually related to the larger context of the quote you're working on. So for now, we'll just go and ignore that. I can hit generate nest. And the system will go off and try to calculate the best nest possible for these parts. This process can take anywhere between zero and five minutes because what we're doing here is running a competitive algorithm that tries to find you the best nest result out of many different possible trials. We'll try all kinds of different orientations for your components within what you've allowed to get you the best nest outcome because we're really interested in making sure that you can nest hyper accurately. Once this is done, you'll be able to view the results of the whole nest. Uh, but because this is not done yet, uh, and this is happening in the background, you can actually keep nesting down this list. This space, uh, as I mentioned before, is a place where you can select parts to nest, but it's also a place where you can use uh, to be your checklist of parts that you have or have not nested yet. So you can make sure if some of these fields aren't filled out, you know that you haven't got the best possible uh, optimization of materials in the quote just yet. While we were talking there, you can see that the nest finished, that will happen live, meaning that you can go off, get a coffee, come back to your desk and things will be done hopefully, especially if you're nesting large sets of components. And we can see for our chosen 200 by 200 sheet size, we have extremely tightly packed sheets here. Paperless parts will generate multiple sheet layouts for the same nest using that same sheet size to make sure that we are fitting all the different components correctly among the nest. You can see here that we're dealing with a couple of nice rectangular components, which have a great grid fit here. But also when we're dealing with these odd shaped uh, components here um, that have this jutted out shape, they're also packed nicely to make sure that we are maximally using material and minimizing scrap and waste. And you can see here that we've got the all important number, the total sheets used in this nest, 
this is the outcome that we're looking for. By getting this total sheets and having that multiply into our sheet cost uh, or per pound cost for our sheets, if we applied that option earlier, we can make sure that we're uh, capturing the full cost of this material. And once you do that, these results will be applied back to your quote. So I nested some parts within this first uh, line item here in this assembly. And we can see here that when we return to this part, we've got this nice nested badge on our material costs and on our routing step costs. Our routing ensures that our laser labor rate is respecting our amortized setup time. So we have a total time setup time of 30 minutes. It's only respecting the amortized cost of that. And similarly with our materials, our material cost has been reduced by the presence of a nest. And this process could be continued as you go throughout the quote. Here's a version of this quote where I've nested almost all of it already. And you can see here that I've generated a whole bunch of different nests for all the different parts within this quote. And this green area is capturing drop. Within each of the results of the nests, you can see important statistics as well. For each sheet configuration, you can see quantity of that sheet, used area, scrap area, and drop area, as well as the parts on that sheet and the area that they take up. And you can see those stats for the total uh, nest as well. So all of this information is of course confirming what we're showing you in these diagrams that we've generated a real efficient nest uh, for these parts. In this particular case, outside of one sheet at the end, we have very little drop or scrap. So we've gotten optimal results and we can make sure that we're giving an optimal deal to our customers. Y'all only have some questions by now and I would encourage you to save them to the end and use our Q and A feature because what I'm gonna do next is walk you through the linear nesting version of this real quick and then we can dive into all the questions that you got. In this same quote that we were working with before, you can see that we also have a set of linear parts at the bottom. And I'm saying linear, again, I'm referring to angle, U-channel, and tube parts. We can see we've got this U-channel part right here. We've got this structural assembly full of all kinds of similar tubes right here. Looking at these parts, we can see we have a whole bunch of different square tubes. And we've got this other angle channel part here as well. And just like with sheet nesting, we can jump into the multi-component nesting module and do linear nests of these as well. Nesting multiple parts along the same bar, tube, angle, U-channel, et cetera. Bar is not included yet. Just like the other interface, I can start by selecting a compatible component and I'll see all the critical information I need to know to make sure that these components are compatible with each other. Seeing their material, 6061 aluminum, seeing their profile type, rectangular radius, and seeing their profile dimensions shown here. We are automatically reading these dimensions off of your geometry. If you're new to paperless parts, that's one of the excellent parts of the paperless parts experience is when you drop a model into our platform, we'll automatically extract all the key information. And that's how we're able to generate the nest before. You'll notice I didn't have to type in those part dimensions anywhere. They were pulled into our system automatically. That's part of what makes this very powerful. So same thing is happening here. I can select one or multiple linear components and use the select all compatible button to grab them. So in this case, I'm grabbing all of the rectangular radius parts from this structural frame assembly. And when I'm ready, I can go ahead and hit prepare linear parts to do the same kind of option fill out. You'll notice in this case that the customer has asked me to quote uh, one, uh, five and 10 of this particular structural frame, as we can see here on the component as well, sorry, one, 10 and 50, forgot my numbers. And uh, because of that, each of these parts now has multiple make quantities. So we're not gonna be generating one nest for this assembly. We're actually gonna be generating three, one for each of these quantity breaks that we're quoting out to our customer. So when I select one component here and select all and go to prepare my nest, instead of filling out one stock dimensions, like before we filled out one sheet, in this case, we're actually filling out multiple stock dimensions. This allows you to just be more efficient when you're working with larger quantities of components. So you can see here, in this case, our top component is gonna be 200 of a certain component, but our lowest is only four. So we probably need a lot less long tubes um, when we're working with our smallest set of components. And this gives us the flexibility to control that. So in this case, I'm gonna use 50 inch long tubes for this one, 120 inch long tubes, actually 160 inch long tubes for the second one and 200 inch long ones for the third one. Um, if I were to punch in a wrong dimension here, something that would be too small, the system will warn me, which we might see in a second. Additionally, like before, we're gonna be bringing in the information from those parts, from the part geometry of those models. So we've got the profile dimensions of all the parts that we're working with, material and profile shape already captured here. Once again, we can choose the cost strategy we wanna use either in per tube 
which we're calling piece in this case, so it's generic, um, or per inch of material. And for these, I'm gonna punch in costs as well, where I'm just gonna use a flat 500, 400, and 300, which we're assuming that we got from some vendor, or again, could be drawn from historical costs from your ERP system. So again, the top, I've got all of my stock properties filled out for the nest to decide what this is gonna be nested out of. And then I'm going to go into my nest settings. And once again, we have common line cutting, which allows you to, to zero out the part-to-part -part clearance and the laser or saw width to capture the minimum distance between parts to respect how you're actually going to manufacture this. These are defaulted as well. Again, I can also set my pricing settings, choosing my amortization strategy based on the length of parts or number of parts. Again, the, the, what we're interested in doing here is trying to get the amortization of your material and setup time across components so that you can make sure that each component captures its portion of the total cost correctly. So you can understand if you're getting a good rate or a bad rate out of your material cost per part. And once again, I can set drop threshold as well by setting 20%. If the unused length area of the part exceeds 20% of the length of the bar um, or tube or angle, uh, then it will be counted as drop here and not charged out to my customer. So a little bit of information to fill out, but once I've done so, I can hit generate. And that's what I was telling you about before, that sometimes there's a minimum dimension of a uh, bar required when there are long parts involved. In this case, it's telling me it's 142. So let's bump this one up to 160 inches and hit generate. You'll notice our linear nests are a little faster, but we've worked real hard to get you those optimized. And once they generate, you can see that all of the same results you get out of your sheet nest, you get called out in linear. The all important total number of pieces, total cost if you apply a cost in there. Um, which I'm not sure why that's zeroed out there. Maybe a little bug that I have to address. It's probably my fault that I broke it. And uh, we've got used length, scrap length, and drop length, and those same stats for each of the sheets. And once again, I'm sorry, each of the bars or tubes or pieces. And for each of those, you can also see the components used in them, their relative length on the sheet and the number of parts. Not sheet again, keep using that word, used to sheet metal. Um, what we're seeing here in these images is a rendering of the way that those parts would fit on the, on the uh, tube in this case. So we can see that this uh, is component number three, and that means we're placing component number three here once on this particular uh, tube layout. We're placing component number five uh, several times in this layout, and we're placing number six several times on this as well. And you can see that we're reusing some of those numbers as well. Number six appears on a couple of different tubes. So just a slightly different rendering than the far more visual um, sheet results that we saw earlier, um, but still a valid way to understand uh, how the results are. And just like before, um, we can use the list of components to make sure that we have finished all the nests uh, across this quote. We can see here that there are a couple of components that haven't been nested yet, and that's our sign that we still have work to do, that we can go in here and generate additional nests. Once I was done with all this kind of work, let's say I was satisfied with all the nests I generated across the thing. I could jump out of the module and head into my parts to again verify that those nest results were applied. So if we look at this part here, we can see uh, that, look at this DXF part rather, we can see that the nest has been applied and the material costs are updated to reflect that nest as with the setup time, amortization and cost. And for those of you who are new to paperless parts, what you're seeing here is our uh, material costing window and operations costing window. These are your routing step costs and these are your material costs. And you can customize how these costs are applied to your cost and configuration and strategy. We'll talk a little bit later how you can book a demo with our team to actually break down some of this stuff. But really, I'm just focused on nesting today. So I'm staying away from some of the particulars here. But by seeing this nested badge across your quote, you can know that you've correctly nested these parts. And so in just the 30 minutes that we've been on this call, we're able to take this huge package of parts and quickly get to quoted prices for all of them that include optimized material costs. With just a couple of clicks in our nesting module, we're able to get relatively accurate material costs so we can be competitive in the quote. But you can also remember that our customer earlier, um, Henry Engineer, was a little sassy to us in our email. And uh, they're from PETACO, which is our pain in the ass customer company. So we might wanna give them a little markup at the end for all the trouble that we've been doing. And so the quickly what we could do there is we could jump into one of our parts, go down to the end, and tack on um, a markup as a pricing item, P to factor for our customer who's just a little bit too much trouble for what they're worth. Let's give them a 50% markup because if they're gonna ask us for quotes that turn around in an hour, we can do it, but we're gonna charge them for it. 
that's all. That's been our intro to multi-component nesting with sheet and linear parts in paperless parts. I'm going to stop sharing now and turn you over to questions. I see we've got a couple of them so far. All righty, Derek's questions. Derek Vance, uh, great to meet you. Um, you asked a couple of questions. I'm going to start with the earliest one. For edge spacing on the nest, if your machine has different spacing requirements along the edges, one size for all sides. Um, yes, you're asking, uh, can you select different spacing on different sides of the sheet? At present, you cannot do that. But as I was going to tease out to all of you, Tableless Parts is a software as a service company. So feature requests like this do not go unheard or never get implemented. This is truly our first version of nesting. So if this is something that you found yourself needing as you were using our tool, you'd reach out to our team, you'd request this feature, and we'd start to consider that as a part of our improvements to the platform that we are constantly doing over time. So unfortunately, at present, can't quite do that. Uh, you also asked, um, are there plans to port the nesting to programming software in the future to ensure the same nest is used? Uh, as in, can you export our estimation nests um, into uh, your programming software? Uh, at present, you cannot do that kind of thing. And at the moment, we unfortunately do not have any plans to do that kind of thing. Uh, the reason for that is we feel real confident in our unfolding algorithm and our nests uh, for estimation. They're high accuracy and they will get you reasonable nests, uh, but we're just not certain right now that we're comfortable taking on the liability of giving you production ready cutouts, lest if you, um, you know, if we failed to capture some critical tolerance, maybe because it wasn't in the model or because, um, you know, we didn't warn you about some situation in our unfolding um, that we could give you uh, incorrect, um, work that could damage your relationship with the customer. So just at present, we're not prepared to uh, let you use it for programming, although we've definitely heard some interest in that. Um, at most, what we're kind of considering right now is the ability to download it as a PDF. So you could give that over to your uh, programmer and make sure they could replicate the nest at least manually, if not automatically. Appreciate the question. Next up, Derek, great questions you're asking. You asked, uh, do you have speeds and feed recommendations to use in formulas for different laser cutter makes and models? Um, it's a bit of a complicated question. Uh, the answer is a tentative yes. Uh, we will work with your shop uh, to get you configuration that matches uh, your machinery and your structure. So if you have the data to give us about those different laser cutters, make some models, we can find ways to incorporate that into your costing. Uh, what we don't have is that built in yet as a, as a native feature. So if you're willing to provide us that data, we can get you some estimates that are a little closer to what you're looking for. Great question. And uh, Tim, yes, great to meet you. Um, you asked, can you get reports showing the linear nesting? Um, I'm not sure I quite know what you mean, but uh, assuming you're looking for some kind of you know, you know, reporting feature for nests uh, across the whole quote, um, again, you can't quite export the nests right now. So you'd have to go in and, and kind of uh, take pictures of the web page yourself for now. Uh, but we've heard a uh, desire to get that kind of reporting, especially for summaries of materials used across the quote. So it's something we're uh, thinking about. Any other questions, folks? Not seen any in our Q&A feature? Eric Borman. Hey, Eric, great to talk to you again. Um, does nesting need to be enabled? Yes, great question. Uh, if you are interested in this feature and you are already a paperless parts user, you will need to reach out to our support team uh, to get this configured for your account. Um, this requires a little bit of configuration for you to answer one or two questions about how you'd like your nests uh, applied to your different parts. Um, so yes, requires some configuration, needs to be enabled. Uh, you can reach out to our team at any time and we can get you set up with that. Tim, returning to your question, uh, PDF printout. Um, yes, today you cannot get a PDF printout right now, but something we've heard a number of times and we're considering as we make improvements to the tool. Great question. Any other questions, folks? Got plenty of time, happy to answer anything, everything, can tell you all things we haven't done. All things are working on. Scott. All righty. Uh, seeing no more questions, I want to bring us back to our slides for just a second to close this out for y'all. Looks like we I want to give one you more from Tim Hank. Oh, great. Sorry about that, Tim. Um, how long have you had the linear nesting? Um, Tim, we've had that for a very small amount of time. We finished that towards the end of last year. Uh, we're just now rolling it out to customers. So if you are uh, interested in using it, reach out to us and we can get you set up with it right away if you're already one of our users. 
anything else, I'll actually give it a nice minute before I jump back to the slides. All righty, um, let's finish this out with a little bit of a closer. So once again, if you are a current Paperless customer, reach out to a support team at any time and we can get you set up with this feature. And if you are not yet a Paperless customer and are really interested in our product after this talk, would really encourage you to reach out to our team or especially visit paperlessparts.com slash demo to get a custom personalized demo of our platform with your shop's parts. You can give us parts and we'll set up uh, a full coding experience that shows you how that would work uh, within our platform. So while today I gave you a high level overview of how to use our tool and really skipped over a lot of the details, they can go in depth with you uh, for your coding processes and your parts to make sure that you're fully understood with how our platform works. Um, if you're interested in more of our Power Lunch series, you can visit this link here as well to check out our backlog of library um, and learn about new Power Lunches that are coming up. Thank you all for your time. It's great to talk with you today. Hope you enjoy our multi-component nesting tools, whether you use them as a current user or, or sign up for our platform and use them in the future. Thanks.